Good evening and a warm welcome to State of Business, RTV's Primetime Business News Bulletin. I'm Indi Vriyamwatha. We take a look at tonight's headlines first. Minister of Labour accepts that economic vulnerability should be addressed before reconciliation and peace building. And the central bank keeps key policy interest rates unchanged. A look at your stories in detail now. Minister of Labour WDJ Seneviratna said that he accepts reconciliation and peace building cannot be achieved without addressing economic vulnerabilities. The minister said this addressing a forum in Colombo this morning. The Ministry of Labour, in collaboration with the International Labour Organization, conducted this forum. Participants were expected to further the development discourse of the lessons learned from the ILO implemented local empowerment for economic development project. The lead project has been also recognized as an initiative that has the potential to contribute to develop rural economies in Sri Lanka. Leeds also made a quiet but important contribution to recon reconciliation defined more broadly. Sustainable employment helps to normalise people's lives, allows them to plan for a better future. Leaders facilitated linkages between businesses in the south of the country with communities in the north to form these profitable joint ventures. And it's also worked uh, with the Sri Lankan diaspora on occasions to support economic growth through so social enterprise. When I went through the purpose and the nature of the project, I realized that there are a number of desired objectives in this project. If I summarize those objectives, the significant desire is to contribute for the reconciliation process of the people in the northern province of Sri Lanka affected by a prolonged conflict and to provide them with sustainable livelihood. I am very much in agreement with the concept that reconciliation and peace building cannot be achieved without addressing the economic vulnerability. The Monetary Board of the Central Bank says the impact of policy measures adopted during the first seven months of the year through increasing policy interest rates and the statutory reserve ratio is being transmitted to the economy gradually. Thereby, the Monetary Board says growth in monetary and credit ag aggregates is likely to decelerate during the remainder of the year to a level supportive of maintaining mid-single-digit inflation in the medium term. Accordingly, at its meeting held today, it was decided to maintain the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate at the central bank unchanged at 7% and 8.50% respectively. Both headline and core inflation measures on a year-on-year -year basis edged down in July 2016. However, CBS Hill says the underlying upward trend in inflation as reflected in annual average price changes appears to have continued thus far during the year. Central Bank says monetary expansion remained high in the month of June. Credit granted to the private sector by commercial banks continued to increase at a significant high rate of 28.2% in June on a year-on-year -year basis compared to 28% recorded in the previous month. A high intake of credit to the industry and services sectors together with a substantial growth in personal loans and advances drove the credit expansion during the first half of this year. Reflecting these developments, the growth of broad money accelerated to 17% in June from 16.5% recorded in the previous month. Supreme Court Judge Justice Shirani Tilakavardhana called Sri Lankan parents to be focused on how to empower their children and to support them to be stronger and independent individuals. She said this speaking at the John Keel's English Day 2016 held in Colombo this evening. Organized by the John Keels Foundation, English Day 2016 provided a platform for recipients of John Keels English Language Scholarships to showcase their talents. Today, more and more parents are invested in the lives of young children, and there are a lot of pressures. Parents, let me tell you, there are so many pressures for children. There are so many misunderstandings. We have the problem of the internet. We have drugs. We have all kinds of problems. And often parents think, this can never happen to my child. And I hope parents start understanding, start learning about what is the reality of your child. Why is my child suddenly changed overnight? Remember, there are things like sexual harassment of boys and girls, violence against young girls and young boys. 
There are things where move, pornographic movies are made. There are all kinds of things that are going on, not somewhere in a Western country, but right here in our beloved Sri Lanka. And you need to know about it. We'll be back with Stock Watch after this break. Welcome back. DFCC Bank further extended its footprint in Kandy with the opening of a new branch at the Kandy City Centre recently. The fully-fledged branch at Kandy City Centre was declared open by the Chief Executive Officer of DFCC Bank, Arjuna Fernando. We realise that today you have a choice as to where you want to bank. All the banks are after you. So we are very grateful for your loyalty and support. And we now, as a full-fledged commercial bank, look forward to supporting you uh, with your banking needs. We have five branches, so our commitment, and we were the, the first branch out of Colombo Candy, so our commitment to the community and uh, customers is there. We need to make all our branches viable. Uh, the central bank now, before they give approval to any new branch, will look at the viability of the existing branches. And we have more news in brief now. The Sri Lanka Ports Authority has begun separate investigations regarding the fire that broke out at the Hyundai private site. The fire had occurred at a stack of scrap rubber tubes. These rubber tubes were used to pump sand to the land from the sea. Sri Lanka Ports Authority clarified that media reports that a fire broke out at the eastern terminal of the port yesterday are incorrect. The Salon Chamber of Commerce will hold a seminar titled Right to Information and its Implications for Business on the 5th of September. The seminar will provide insights into how businesses can use the RTI law to advance their ability to engage with the government and improve decision making and also detail the process of obtaining information under RTI. Three expert speakers will deliberate on the new law that was introduced and its key implications for businesses. Brides of Sri Lanka has joined hands with Hilton Colombo to host an extravagant bridal show aimed at raising funds for the Maharagama National Cancer Hospital. Wedding affairs by Brides of Sri Lanka will show the audience over 50 dresses and designers presenting their intricate bridal designs. The charity bridal show will be held on the 18th of September from 6 p.m. at the Hilton Colombo. I'll be back with Stock Watch after this break. Welcome back. The Colombo Bowls ended in a mixed note today, once again with local activity witnessed in the market. Turnover was largely driven via mixed interest on Ceylon grain elevators and the counter had large blocks traded across the board. The all share price index gained 1.61 to close trading at 6,541.80, while the SNPSL20 index dipped 6.14 to close trading at 3,579. Turnover for the day amounted to 727.3 million rupees with 21.5 million shares traded. The top traded counters were Salon Grain Elevators, which contributed 275.2 million rupees, John Keels Holdings, 136.1 million rupees, the Kingsbury, 39.8 million rupees, Lanka IOC, 21.7 million rupees, and Axis Engineering, 17.8 million rupees. Foreign investors in the meantime were net sellers on John Keels Holdings and Salon Grain Elevators. Foreign inflows amounted to around 119.2 million rupees, while outflows totaled 344.9 million rupees. Here's a look at the day's foreign currency rates. That's all from the newsroom for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow, same time. Good night.